This stat quest is odd. So I'm gonna talk about the odds and the log of the odds. Stat quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to Stat Quest. Today we're gonna be talking about odds and log odds, and they're gonna be clearly explained. The odds are in favor that you're already familiar with odds. For example, you might say that the odds in favor of my team winning the game are 1 to 4. Visually, we have five games total, one of which my team will win, and four of which my team will lose. So the odds are 1 to 4. Alternatively, we can write this as a fraction. Visually, we have one game my team wins divided by the four games that my team loses. If we do the math, we will see that the odds are 0.25 that my team will win the game. Here's another example. You might say that the odds in favor of my team winning the game are 5 to 3. Visually, we have eight games total, five of which my team will win, and three of which my team will lose. So the odds are 5 to 3. Alternatively, we can write this as a fraction, 5 divided by 3. Visually, we have the 5 games my team wins, divided by the 3 games my team loses. If we do the math, we see that the odds are 1.7 that my team will win the game. Note, odds are not probabilities. The odds are the ratio of something happening, i.e., my team winning, to something not happening, i.e., my team not winning. Probability is the ratio of something happening, i.e., my team winning, to everything that could happen, i.e., my team winning and losing. In the previous example, the odds in favor of my team winning the game are 5 to 3. However, the probability of my team winning is the number of games they win, 5, divided by the total number of games they play, 8. Here's the math. For the odds, we have the ratio of 5 to 3, and for the probability, we have the ratio of 5 to 8. Thus, we see that the odds in favor of my team winning are different from the probability of my team winning. Now that we know that odds are different from probabilities, let's talk about how odds can be calculated from probabilities. In the last example, we saw that the odds of winning are 1.7, and the probability of winning is 0.625. We can also calculate the probability of losing. The probability of losing is 0.375. Note, we could also calculate the probability of losing as 1 minus the probability of winning. That equals 1 minus 5 divided by 8. And that gives us 8 divided by 8 minus 5 divided by 8. And ultimately, we get 3 divided by 8. This is equal to 0 0.375. So either way, we get the same probability. Now let's take the ratio of the probability of winning to the probability of losing. Alternatively, we can put 1 minus the probability of winning into the denominator. Either way, we get the same ratio. 5 divided by 8 divided by 3 divided by 8. The 8's cancel out since they scale the numerator and the denominator by the exact same amount. Thus, the ratio of the probability ends up being the same thing as the ratio of the raw counts. And so either way, we get the same odds, 1.7. I mentioned this because about 50% of the time, you see odds calculated from counts. 
and the other 50% of the time, you will see odds calculated from probabilities. Either way, you get the same results. Note, out there in the wild world of statistics, you will often see this formula simplified to this, where P is the probability of winning. Bam! Now that we know what the odds are, let's talk about the log of the odds. Let's go back to the original example. In this example, we calculated the odds of winning as 1 to 4, or 0 0.25. If my team was worse, the odds of winning could be 1 to 8, or 0 0.125. And if my team was terrible, the odds of winning could be 1 to 16, or 0 0.063. And, lastly, if my team was the worst, the odds of winning could be 1 to 32, or 0 0.031. We can see that the worse my team is, the odds of winning get closer and closer to zero. In other words, if the odds are against my team winning, then they will be between 0 and 1. Now, if my team was good, then the odds might be 4 to 3, or 1.3, in favor of my team winning. And if my team was better, the odds might be 8 to 3, or 2.7, in favor of winning. And if my team was really good, the odds might be 32 to 3 or 10.7 in favor of winning. We can see that the better my team is, the odds of winning start at 1 and just go up and up. In other words, if the odds are for my team winning, then they will be between 1 and infinity. Another way to look at this is with a number line. The odds of my team losing go from 0 to 1 and the odds of my team winning go from 1 to infinity and beyond. The asymmetry makes it difficult to compare the odds for or against my team winning. For example, if the odds are against 1 to 6, then the odds are 1 divided by 6, which equals 0 0.17. But if the odds are in favor 6 to 1, then the odds are 6 divided by 1, which equals 6. The magnitude of these odds looks way smaller than these odds. Taking the log of the odds solves this problem by making everything symmetrical. For example, if the odds are against 1 to 6, then the log of the odds, or the log of 1 divided by 6, which equals the log of 0 0.17, which equals negative 1.79. And if the odds are in favor, 6 to 1, then the log of the odds are the log of 6 divided by 1, which equals the log of 6, which equals 1.79. Using the log function, the distance from the origin, or 0, is the same for 1 to 6 or 6 to 1 odds. Double bam! Okay. Now that we know the main idea about the log of the odds, let's get into some details. Earlier, we saw that odds can be calculated from counts. And we saw that the same odds could be calculated from probabilities. And that means we can calculate the log of the odds with counts or probabilities. Either way, we'll get the same value. Note. The log of the ratio of the probabilities is called the legit function, and it forms the basis for logistic regression. I mention it because if you do logistic regression, you'll see it a whole lot. It's no big deal. Okay, I get it. Odds are just the ratio of something happening to something not happening. And the log of the odds is just the, duh, log of the odds. What's the big deal? To show you what the big deal is all about, if I pick pairs of random numbers that add up to 100, for example, 
and use them to calculate the log of the odds and draw a histogram. The histogram is in the shape of a normal distribution. This makes the log of the odds useful for solving certain statistics problems, specifically ones where we are trying to determine probabilities about win or lose, or yes or no, or true or false type situations. Triple BAM! In summary, the odds are just the ratio of something happening, i.e. my team winning, to something not happening, i.e. my team not winning. And the log of the odds is just the log of the odds. It's no big deal. The log of the odds makes things symmetrical, easier to interpret, and easier for fancy statistics. One last thing before we go. Even though the odds is a ratio, it's different from an odds ratio. But don't panic. We'll talk about the odds ratio in the next stat quest. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to support stat quest, well, like the video and consider buying one or two of my original songs. All right, until next time, quest on.